just got a lot tougher in Washington State. After the state Supreme Court ruled that before you can accuse your lawyer of malpractice, you have to prove you didn't commit the crime. Your protection is based upon the fact that you have been harmed, and you're not harmed if you're guilty. The case at issue involved psychiatrist Jesse Ang, who sued his lawyers for convincing him to plead guilty to felony fraud. He eventually hired new representation, went to trial, and was acquitted. But Ang's malpractice lawsuit failed because he couldn't prove he didn't do it. I'm always of the belief that we're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. If we are not proven guilty, logically, we are innocent. The Washington justices voted five to four that Ang's acquittal did not mean he was innocent, only that the government had failed to prove its case. Requiring him to prove his innocence, they argued, ensures that the guilty cannot commit a crime, get off, and then profit from that crime. Attorneys, like the justices, are divided. What this case does is it creates virtual immunity, a safe harbor for criminal defense lawyers. Interestingly, the ruling puts defense lawyers who once championed a client's innocence in the position of arguing the opposite in civil court. Justices who voted against the decision fear the ruling protects incompetent or legitimately negligent attorneys. Defense lawyers object to that characterization. They would never, in my mind, upholding their own oath, make some decision I'm going to do less of a job because he can't sue me anyway, because that's not what drives lawyers. It's a profession, not a business. But with big malpractice judgments and high insurance premiums, bad lawyering can get expensive, except in Washington State where Jesse Ang is appealing to the high court to reconsider a ruling that makes him both not guilty and not innocent. In Olympia, Dan Springer, Fox News. Well, we often hear that the United States Constitution guarantees that the